It's your girl Missy here, back with another one. Here to go over the trailer for Power Book 2 Go Season 2, Episode 4, Getting These Ends. So for the synopsis, we have Davis questions Tariq's client referrals, Kane finds Brayden eager to prove himself and gives him the chance to make some real money, Zeke needs everyone's help to assure his professional basketball future is protected, lots of ground to cover, so let's get started. So it opens up with Monet telling the crew that they have to come up with a million dollars in three days, so it's time to get this bag. We already know what this is about. Davis McLean is about to take them to the cleaners. His fee is not cheap. In season one, Tariq had to pay him 500 k to represent his mother. The 500 k had to be liquid and upfront to even have a conversation. He is about that bread, and just like he told Saks in the last episode, he sees the Tejadas as repeat customers, and he is about to clean up and get that bag for represent Z. And the fact that he has NBA dreams, the damage control that he has already done and is about to do comes with a price. So yesterday's price ain't today's price. He need a million dollars. So Monet needs all hands on deck and they are about to go to work. That boy Zeke is looking so stressed out in this clip. I'm like, I hope they get this together because he is going to crumble. And we got Kane telling someone that he has to make a big move for his cousin and then he has to leave town. So why is he in a rush to leave town? Why does he have to get the bag and then leave? My guess is that because Ramirez's body is found, and of course we know he did it, so he has to get out of Dodge quick. Of course, they won't connect it to him in episode four, but he knows he did it. And with a cop body being found, the best thing to do is just go ahead and get out the way. In this next clip, we see Kane and Braden hooking back up. Kane already prepped Brayden to get some money on the side through the streets, and now it's time for Brayden to prove himself. Kane has manipulated this boy and prepped him by telling him he works for Tariq, and he gained his trust by bringing the money back the next day in episode three as promised. So Brayden and Kane are about to hit a lick so they can get this bread. We see Kane comes out shooting and him and Brayden get away. But I noticed when Kane came out shooting, he ran past the body. So I'm like, oh Lord, did this dude catch yet another body? So we are about to know soon. But the guys are shooting back at Kane. He gets away. Brayden car gets shot up really bad. I'm thinking to myself, boy, you don't need to be driving your car doing no dirty work with Kane. But he don't really know no better. He's still wet behind the ears. Tariq has already warned Braid not to do any business with Kane outside of the arrangement, but Kane has Braden right where he wants him. From the looks of it, Braden is enjoying his life of crime a little bit too much. Then we got Kane talking to Mecca, so he's most likely telling him that he's going out of town for a minute. Of course, we already know Mecca is about to ask that boy all questions. He's going to have to get to the bottom of exactly what is going on and why he's going out of town. And we already know Kane is most likely going to tell him. But Mecca most likely knows anyway. He has researched the family and he probably already saw Davis on the news addressing the situation with Zeke. So he probably has a little bit um, of an inclination what's going on, but Kane will tell him the rest. Of course, he's not about to tell Mecca that he killed a cop, but he's definitely about to give him just enough information to answer his questions as to why he has to leave town. In this next clip, we see a murky area in the woods. So this looks exactly like the area that Kane took Ramirez's body to. So episode four seems to be the episode where they find Ramirez's body. This is going to change the game. This is not looking good at all. In episode three, we saw on the police board that they had a bolo out on Ramirez. So basically be on the lookout. Now back in episode one, when they found the 15 mag belonging to Ramirez, Whitman told the other cop to keep that part quiet and not tell the press. So up until now, Ramirez has been missing for a week and they have a bolo out on him. But all of that is coming to an end, and now they will have two bodies, Jabari and Ramirez. Investigating a missing teacher is one thing, but this whole thing is about to heat up when they find one of their own is dead. That will be released to the press, and they are about to stop playing games with everybody. They are about to put the pressure on all suspects, Carrie, Zeke, and probably more people. This thing is about to get wild real quick. 
That's why Kane trying to get out of Dodge, heading out of town, because he know it's about to heat up. Next, we got Tariq talking to Davis and Sachs, telling them that they are trying to arrest Zeke for murder. And Davis is saying, it sounds like Tariq is alleging a cover-up. So Tariq has to make sure that this thing does not fall on Zeke because Tariq's future at Stansfield is riding on Zeke. The information that Tariq gives McLean is heading towards a cover-up and it's involving the gun. We already know that the gun was found when they found Jabari, but like I said, at the time, they only knew Ramirez was missing. The cover-up is regarding the gun that they found at the scene. So Whitman better hope that he did not do any shady business behind the scenes with that gun. If he made any errors and did not follow protocols, he is in for it. He may have dropped the ball and Davis will use that to clear his clients. With the way that Whitman is moving, I think he dropped the ball because he's so focused on Carrie. And sometimes that is what happens in police work. They're so tunnel focused on the wrong person that they're making mistakes with the evidence and the correct people that they need to be looking for. Tariq's plan all along was to pin this on Ramirez. Now, we know that when they found the gun, Whitman didn't believe that, of course, a cop would do something and leave his gun at the scene. But that is still evidence that should have been looked into and researched to find out why that gun was there. So it looks like Whitman did drop the ball. So we'll find out soon. In this final scene, we have Simon Stern telling Whitman to go away. Simon is very invested with Stansfield. Whitman told him he is not taking orders from him. Stern told him that everybody takes orders from him. So Whitman better be very careful about how he is moving because he is upsetting people in high places. And when that happens, his outcome is not going to be good. One thing for certain, if Simon Stern is not messing with you, You better fall in line quick or your days are numbered. He is a very well-connected and a very powerful man. So, y'all, it's going to be a lot of things popping off in episode four. Kane getting out of town. They finding Ramirez's body. Zeke is under pressure. Stern putting that heat on Whitman. So, this thing is is looking crazy. So, what do you think? What are your predictions for episode four? What are you looking forward to? Until I get more updated information, that's all I got for now. But I will be back with another video tomorrow, and I will see you in the next one. See you later.